Hey there, it's Dr. Michelle. And today I want to talk about an issue that so many women deal with, especially after the age of 35. And this is gas, bloating, cramping, feeling like you're three months pregnant by the end of the day. And this is something that I get asked about on a regular basis. And most women don't know that bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea, irritable bowel syndrome, these are all very much related to hormone decline. I know, I know nobody tells you this. I know that you've probably been to the doctor or a practitioner and you've talked about your gut issues and they didn't mention anything about your hormones. They asked you what you're eating. They might've told you to exercise. They might've gave you a PPI or a laxative or some other band-aid to your gut issues. But what most women don't know and most people don't know in general is that our hormones are very much related to our gut health and our gut health relates to our hormones. So today I want to talk about the connection between our gut health and menopause and perimenopause and how hormones like estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone can really impact your digestive system and your microbiome. So let's talk first about the hormone estrogen. Estrogen is our main female hormone. It's the hormone that gives all the press. And it's so important, especially during menopause, because when we have low estrogen, it can lead to a variety of symptoms, hot flashes, loss of collagen in our skin and rapid aging, low libido, vaginal dryness, the list goes on and on, right? And so what we don't often talk about is how estrogen plays a crucial role in the balance of our microbiome. Studies actually show that estrogen can help promote the growth of beneficial bacteria in your gut while keeping harmful bacteria in check. So when our estrogen levels decline during menopause, this can disrupt that delicate balance of our gut microbiome. And this can lead to an increase in the unhealthful, harmful bacteria and a decrease in our beneficial bacteria. This can result in digestive issues such as bloating, constipation, diarrhea, but also can result in immune issues, leaky gut, autoimmunity, parasites, so many other issues. Our microbiome is so important. If you haven't heard about the gut microbiome, oh my God, you've been under a rock. But when it comes to our digestion, estrogen, very, very, very important for things like bifidobacteria, lactobacillus, so important for the health of our microbiome because when the good bacteria starts to decline, there's like empty seats available, much like if you've ever seen like the Grammys <laughs> and you always, all the seats are always filled because they have what they call fillers. So if someone gets up and goes, goes to the bathroom or takes a phone call, they put people in the seats to fill it up. The same is true for your microbiome. If your good bacteria goes away because of lack of estrogen, bad bacteria are waiting to fill those seats. And the more bad bacteria you have, the more problems you have with your health, with your skin, with your brain, with your hair, with your immune system, and also with your digestion. So, so important. So we talked about estrogen. Now let's talk about progesterone and testosterone. So these hormones are also super important for our gut health. Progesterone has been found to influence gut motility along with estrogen, but progesterone has a more dominant role here in the movement of food through our digestive tract. It's called transit time, the amount of time it takes from the food that you eat to work its way all the way through your digestive system out to your bowels. So um, progesterone is so important when the levels decline during perimenopause and menopause, this can lead to slower gut motility and this can cause constipation, but also can cause the food sitting there in your digestive tract to begin to ferment and release gas. This gas causes bloating, causes flatulence, definitely not what we want. And so definitely a big problem for women. And then lastly, testosterone. Testosterone is also an important hormone for women. Testosterone and its precursor DHEA are really important. They're linked to gut inflammation. So in women, when we have low levels of DHEA and testosterone, that's associated with increased gut permeability, which is also known as leaky gut. When the gut membrane kind of separates and things can get through, we call that leaky gut. And what happens is, particles that are supposed to be inside your intestines actually seep out 
into your bloodstream and that causes inflammation, which can be linked to autoimmune disorders like Hashimoto's, lupus, and others. And so maintaining healthy levels of DHA and testosterone are also super important for our gut health to support our overall gut health, but our overall health in general. And so we've talked about the link between your hormones and your gut, but let's talk about how the gut bacteria or your gut microbiome actually affects your hormones, right? So it's a two-way street um, that goes both ways. And so your gut is home to millions, trillions actually, of microorganisms that play a vital role in pretty much all aspects of your health, including the production and regulation of your hormones, believe it or not. And so there's actually a section of the microbiome or group of bacteria called the estrobolome, and they are home to an enzyme or they're home to bacteria that produce an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase. And so beta-glucuronidase can reactivate estrogen that's been metabolized by the liver and marked for elimination. So once our body uses up the estrogen, it gets actually packaged to, to go out of the body and excreted. But if you have too high levels of this beta-glucuronidase, it can release it back into your bloodstream. And now you have this used estrogen that's in circulation that can make hormone imbalance worse and can worsen menopause symptoms. Also, your gut bacteria can also help to influence the production of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. They're not just made in your ovaries like we used to think. They're also made by your gut bacteria. But gut bacteria can also influence things like cortisol and serotonin, which can affect our mood, our stress stress levels, our inflammation levels, and also our sleep. So all these are so important during perimenopause and menopause. So let's talk again about how many women, maybe you, are dealing with bloating, are dealing with abdominal pain, cramping, gas, changes in their bowel habits, and they're going to the doctor and the doctor's like, ah, it must be what you're eating. Why don't you take a food diary? Why don't you take this prescription laxative? Why don't you eat more fiber? And those are all okay. Not a big fan of the laxatives, but this is very, very common in perimenopause and menopause because of the declining hormones. Now there's some women who might be more sensitive to the hormone decline than others. This may include women who have irritable bowel syndrome or IBD or IBS, or if they have other gastrointestinal disorders like diverticulitis or um, things like abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, if they're already dealing with those, the hormone decline can make things much worse. And then hormone fluctuations during perimenopause can also make things bad. So the good news is that you can stabilize your hormone levels using hormone replacement therapy and get things leveling out and back to normal. Other issues that we see um, when women have slow motility or low transit time, when food is taking such a long time to make it through the digestive system, the process takes longer and therefore water from the intestines are actually reabsorbed back into the bloodstream and that can make constipation even worse. Things get all dried out, can lead to increased gas and bloating. And just like your skin becomes dry, just like your vagina becomes dry, estrogen can dry things out. So not just your intestines, but also your bile ducts. So your bile ducts, they hold bile, um, which helps us digest fat. So when your bile ducts become dehydrated or sticky, it interferes with the bile flow from your liver to your gallbladder, as well as the gallbladder into the small intestine. So it can break down that fat. So the longer the bile sits in the gallbladder, the more likely it is that you're going to get gallstones and other issues. So gallbladder disease becomes even more common in menopause. And many women who've never had an issue with their gallbladder develop problems during menopause. Things like inflammation of the gallbladder, things like gallstones. And so women who've lived all their lives with no gallbladder issues at all, end up having to need gallbladder removal surgery when they hit menopause. So digestive issues can occur really anywhere in the GI tract, the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, or the small intestine, or the lower part of the GI tract, which includes the large intestine. This can be bloating, this can be indigestion, 
acid reflux, abdominal cramping, gas, diarrhea, constipation, even nausea. So if you're dealing with any of these, just know that you do not have to endure these symptoms. And there's so much you can do to really help all of your menopause symptoms. And like we're talking about today, your digestive symptoms that are associated with menopause. So number one, get those hormones tested. So if you have any any of the symptoms we talked about today, definitely consider getting your hormones tested and consider replacing hormones that are deficient with bioidentical hormone replacement. So many things go downhill when our hormones decline and they don't have to be that way. There's no reason to expect women to live the second half of their lives in a state of hormone deficiency or decline and to feel like crap. You don't need to have digestion. You don't need to have bloating. You don't need to have irritation to your bowels. You don't need to have constipation or diarrhea. And these are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the benefits that come with hormone replacement therapy. But now that you understand the connection between your hormones and your gut health, and you know how important your gut health is for your overall health, maybe that will help you decide to consider getting those hormones restored. Now, you can also then do a bunch of lifestyle things. So phytoestrogens are um, plant-based estrogen mimickers that are current in food naturally. These are not gonna bring your estrogen levels up to where they used to be before menopause, but they can sometimes help a little bit with alleviating some of your symptoms. So things like um, tofu and tempeh, veggies, um, fruits like dates and apples, and also things like flax and sesame seeds. These have small amounts of phytoestrogens. So including some of those in your diet can be helpful. Um, if constipation is an issue, definitely magnesium. So making sure you're eating magnesium rich foods, but you can also supplement with magnesium citrate or magnesium oxide to help get things moving. It can help relieve digestive issues like flatulence and constipation. Now with magnesium, don't overdo it because you can end up with diarrhea. So definitely um, 250 to 500 milligrams per day of magnesium citrate or magnesium oxide. Those are the two that help with gut motility. Um, other magnesiums like magnesium glycinate are great for your brain, but not so much for gut motility. Also probiotics. So boosting your good gut bacteria um, when estrogen and progesterone fuel your healthy gut bacteria, when those decline, that can lead you deficient. So supplementing with a probiotic or eating probiotic rich foods like sauerkraut, kombucha, um, miso, things like that can be helpful as well. Even yogurt, if it's not highly sugar yogurt, eating more fiber, fiber can be super helpful to help kind of like help things go through the digestive system, clean things up, move things along, um, not letting semi-digested matter bog down your intestines and not letting it just sit there stagnant. So eating leafy green vegetables, eating things like artichokes and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and raspberries and blueberries and blackberries, those are all great sources of fiber. Not really a big fan of fiber supplements. So getting your fiber from food, 25 to 35 milligrams per day can, or grams per day, I should say, um, super helpful. Also things like teas, like natural herbal teas, like ginger, peppermint, chamomile, these can be super helpful when it comes to settling out your digestion and keeping things moving along. Hydration, drinking your water. Water is so important for almost everything in your, in your diet, in your health, in your wellness. So also important for hormones and for gut health. So drinking your water, I'm gonna drink some of mine right now. Staying hydrated is so important, especially if you're dealing with things like hot flashes and night sweats, you might be more dehydrated than you think. So getting your water is probably not anything that water doesn't help. Also exercise. So you don't have to be a gym rat, but definitely getting your body moving every day can help with moving things along in your digestive system as well. And then chewing your food. Chewing your food slowly and completely really does help to do that initial breakdown before it gets into your digestive system so that things can be more easily um, processed and moved on. Also eating your food when you're not stressed and trying to keep stress at a minimum can be super important for your digestive system. We have something called the flight or fight nervous system, and that's the opposite of the digest and rest nervous system. So when we are nervous, when we are stressed, it actually puts a halt on our digestive system. So really, especially when you're eating, making sure that you're sitting and eating, you're not stressed out, and you're chewing your food well, you're swallowing it completely before you take the next bite, 
And then also incorporating stress reduction practices into your day to make sure that you're digesting that food that you ate three hours earlier. So doing breathing exercises, meditation, yoga, Tai Chi, these can also be so important in keeping your digestion working as it should. And of course, when our hormones are declined, we can be less resilient to stress. So we become more irritable, more edgy. So um, this is making those stress reduction practices even more important. And then also just if you chew gum, just be careful because sugar-free gum often has um, sugar alcohols or sorbitol in it, which can contribute to gas and other digestive issues. So one thing I want to note when menopause issues are a little bit more serious. So when your stomach issues are constant or you're feeling like you are constantly bloating, not just in the afternoon, but when you wake up super bloated, if there's pain, if you're taking painkillers, if you are feeling uh, that fullness and the abdominal pain all the time, then it could be a more serious issue. So you might want to check with a practitioner, um, get a checkup, this could be fibroids, it could be polyps, it even could be something like ovarian cancer. So do not ignore serious pain, definitely get help for it. But for most of us, these tips are going to help you go a long way. So eating a balanced diet, rich in fiber, rich in fruits and vegetables, anti-inflammatory foods, lean protein, avoiding that sugar, avoiding all the chemicals, including fermented foods in your diet, like kombucha, sauerkraut, kimchi, and yogurt to help promote that beneficial bacteria. Consider taking a probiotic supplement, also staying hydrated, um, getting some exercise, practicing your stress reduction practices like meditation, yoga, and deep breathing, and consider replacing those hormones so that we can get the problem solved at the root. So there you have it. I hope this gives you an understanding of the connection between gut health in menopause and our hormones. And hopefully you've gotten some steps to improve your gut microbiome. If you're interested in hormone replacement therapy, um, definitely check out my masterclass, what every woman needs to know about hormone replacement that their doctor isn't telling them. It will give you so many insights and really empower you to live that second half of your life the way you deserve to, so you can live more and age less. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to comment below and let me know what your thoughts are. Hit the like button because that helps this video get shown to more women like you. Take care. Have a great one. Bye-bye.